heading into the final day of 2021. Texas is in its eighth day of tropical air, and that's it flowing north from the Gulf. And we've also got a flow of moisture coming from the Pacific off Mexico, forming an atmospheric river heading into places like El Paso, Lubbock, and some of it wrapping around into Arizona. And that's it. That's that band of moisture coming in from northwest Mexico into the southern states. And that will be with us over the next couple of days, being transported by the jet stream into the eastern states on New Year's Day. And then the central U.S. will be seeing an incursion of cold air. And that will be the most intense outbreak of cold air this season. The cold air being driven by this 1028 millibar high coming out of central Canada. Temperatures are below zero this afternoon across much of the Dakotas and Montana. Temperatures do look a little bit mild from Denver up to Milwaukee, but that's because the cold air is still piled up to the north and has not really made its southward incursion just yet. The tropical air mass flowing up from Texas into Louisiana and into southern Illinois, bringing dew points in the 60s across much of that region. And to the west, a Pacific front. That's giving us an anafront type structure with most of the precip found behind the surface front. Checking out the Pacific areas, it does look quiet. Some moderation of the cold wave in Washington and Oregon. Temperatures coming up to the 30s. And then in Alaska, it depends on where you are. Warm air to the south, cold air up to the north. A powerful Gulf of Alaska system just south of Anchorage. And then moving into Canada, we do find the appearance of some intense Arctic air. Minus 44 near Fort Good Hope and near minus 30 around Yellowknife. Further south, we find minus 20s across much of Alberta. Some of the cold air is spreading eastward into Quebec and Ontario. That's going to be the leading edge right there. Out ahead of it, some mild conditions, some snow in Quebec, Montreal, and fog from Ottawa down to Boston. And Greenland and the Atlantic looks pretty quiet. A storm system up there south of Iceland, but that's just about out of the picture. And some freezing rain being reported in southwestern Greenland. Now, I think we're the only channel that shows you forecast records. A lot of other sources, they tell you what the weather has been and what the records were. But I prefer to look ahead. And this is what we're seeing for the remainder of this afternoon. 84 in Mississippi, 80 at Galveston. Those are all going to break records for the date. And 80s all the way into southern Georgia. This is how it looks for tomorrow. A repeat. The cold air has not yet arrived. It's on its way south. So temperatures will continue to run 70s and 80s across much of the Gulf Coast region. And this is how it looks for Sunday. The warmth shifting to the East Coast. And something very significant. I've also plotted the minimums, the record minimums. And all we've got is this one little 32 there around needles. So that shows you that the temperatures are coming back to seasonable, typical normals. We are long overdue for this cold wave. And really, we should be seeing much colder temperatures instead of this transition from late September to November, which is kind of what it seems. The water vapor channel very nicely showing that moisture plume, the atmospheric river, the pineapple express, whatever you like to call it, and behind an area of subsidence. And this appears to be a upper level low. And as a result, we're getting this cold core convection across Arizona this afternoon. Also on this water vapor imagery, we see the subsidence within the subtropical ridge down to the south, keeping Florida fairly dry. And we also see 
bluish and whitish colors up to the north. That does not indicate moisture, but indicates the absence of radiation reaching the satellite due to the land mass and the clouds being very cold. So the most significant moisture at this time, that's going to be it right there, coming from El Paso to the Oklahoma Panhandle and into northern Kansas. And there it is on the surface plot. Mostly mid and high clouds, but there are some showers and bits of rain embedded in that stuff here and there. And these are the watches and warnings. As that front comes south, we will get that interaction with that atmospheric river. It really helps to have that frontal lift on the back side of the surface front that gives us a potent area for precipitation development. And that's what we're going to be seeing over the next day or two. So let's watch it unfold on the GFS. Here's that cold air coming south. The southern boundary, that's going to be roughly in here. And then we have that atmospheric river coming in from the El Paso area. So going into tomorrow morning, that's the scenario we're going to be seeing. The cold air nosing into Enid and Tulsa and Amarillo. And north of it, some mixed precip and snow, especially in western Kansas. Going into Saturday evening, we will be seeing some snow showers around Chicago with thunderstorms in Kentucky and Tennessee. The leading edge of the polar air mass moving into Dallas, Little Rock, St. Louis, and Lubbock. And then for Sunday morning, that cold air just spills in everywhere. The cold front moving out into the western Gulf. The system in the northeastern U.S. looking a little bit dry by that point. And then we get this 1030 millibar high covering much of the central U.S., and in some of the older forecasting literature, we refer to that as a prevailing high. More fun coming into the northwestern U.S. for Monday. Look at that, some snow being indicated in the Seattle area and maybe even near Portland. So that's going to move eastward on Tuesday, cross the Rockies, and emerge into the Central Plains around Tuesday. I think that's going to be it right there. And then looks like another wave moving on shore for Tuesday and Wednesday. That one looks a little bit stronger. Winter weather from Colorado to Kansas and looks like we have another outbreak of cold air on our hands once again. Let's take a look around the country starting with Arizona and New Mexico. The main bear clinic zone off to the east, and this looks like a upper level low. And indeed, that's what we have, the 500 millibar upper level low just to the south around Puerto Panasco. Going up a little bit higher at 300 millibars, it opens up into a sharp trough in southwestern Arizona. And embedded within that, certainly some convective elements. Remember, the Gozar series does have derived products that include lightning strikes. GLM flashes, we pull that up. And it's kind of hard to see, but if you if we freeze frame that, you can see some very tiny plus marks indicating lightning strikes, and those move on off to the northeast. Looks like the activity has mostly subsided, but a little corridor of electrical activity across Casa Grande, Eloy, and up into the Safford Globe area. Conditions moderating in California and Nevada. Still got some Thule fog in Stratus around Bakersfield. We've still got mountain wave indications in the higher terrain of Nevada with some snow showers. And certainly looks like a very unstable boundary layer. Lots of cumuliform elements. And down beneath that in the Sierra Nevadas, we can see a lot of snow from around Mount Shasta down to around Yosemite Park. The rest of it up north, there's certainly snow on the ground, but it's covered up by low and mid cloud. Portland and Seattle, Washington, Idaho, very similar to yesterday. We are clearing out some of the cloud, leaving us with extensive snow cover. 
Montana there in the deep freeze. We see extensive snow cover. There it is from Saskatchewan all the way down towards Wyoming. So we're certainly producing cold air. Checking out the Dakotas, similar picture there, extensive snow cover from Fargo westward. Dropping down to Nebraska, this is not snow cover because you can see the leading edge there. It's on the move westward. So that's going to be stratus associated with that front dropping through the central plains. And out in Denver, Colorado, mountain wave activity indicating that fast flow aloft. Southern Kansas and Oklahoma, north of that southern frontal boundary, mostly covered by that atmospheric river, mid and high clouds, very extensive. And in Texas, we get more into the tropical moisture. This looks like June. Cloud streets moving northward from the Gulf Coast region. And if it was June, I would almost be looking for sea breeze activity. Certainly nothing like that today, but uh, it does indicate a very warm and moist pattern. Very quiet in Florida, dominated by southwesterly flow and the subtropical ridge as we saw earlier. Some convective elements where we have very rich moisture interacting with the cold upper level conditions. That's going to be down there. I think that's Waycross, Georgia. Going into the Midwest states, we recross that frontal boundary down to the south. That's oriented somewhat like this. However, it is covered by a lot of mid and upper level cloud and the Great Lakes in between weather systems. A lot of fog and stratus in that area. The east coast underneath that persistent jet stream, lots of cirrus and alt cumulus. Not much happening at the surface though. And in the northeastern states, we get a little bit north of that jet stream. Some clear skies in Schenectady and Buffalo, but a little bit further to the northeast, we've got that isotropic lift and air mass modification, some moist air flowing over very cold ground, and that's given us some fog and rain and drizzle and even a bit of snow as you cross over into Quebec. And there's how it's looking in Toronto and Montreal this afternoon. There's a quick look at the imagery for Alaska, and you see this little arc up to the north because that's, that's going to be the extent of the sunlight. It's way to the south. These areas here we can't see too well because the sun angle is very low. So for the most part, we're falling back on infrared imagery. But we do see that powerful system there. I know there's one south of Anchorage. It looks like there's an upper level system right in this area. And then further up to the north, the only thing that I'm confident about is that there is a lack of mid and upper level cloud. Most of that is going to be snow on the ground, ice fog, stratus, and it's very hard to resolve, especially on infrared imagery. And I think a really cool product to show is the Extreme Forecast Index from the ECMWF. This is going to be for tomorrow evening, Saturday, Saturday evening. So we can see the cold front coming south, some very cold air back behind it. And the purple, that's going to be areas of high wind. So Arizona, New Mexico, Mississippi, Alabama should be a little bit breezy. Going into Sunday proper. Some cold air coming down into the central plains, but you can see the aerial extent is not that great. So this is a return to typical weather for January. Then going into Monday and Tuesday, some moderation throughout the country, rain and snow through the Pacific Northwest. That precip area spreads south into the Columbia River Basin for Tuesday. And then for Wednesday, crossing the Rockies into Wyoming, and then we see colder than average temperatures once again in the central and northern plains and windy in Texas and Oklahoma. And it is going to be a cold air outbreak coming south a week from now. 
that weekend around the 8th or 9th. But the European model expecting that to not be too severe. And as we saw with the GFS, it was not really bullish on that either. So overall, a return to typical January type weather. And that's all for our 2021 Forecast Lab, and we will see you once again on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Hope you have a great New Year's Eve and a great New Year's weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.